Oh hey, I'm Corbin from KarateMart.com. And I'm Ian, also from KarateMart.com. What are we talking about today, Corbin? Today we're talking about Eskrima sticks, which you look really excited about. I'm today. excited about Eskrimas. I love Eskrimas. Is that an Eskrima in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Incredibly happy. No, it's an Eskrima. What are Eskrima sticks? I'm glad you asked, Ian. So Eskrima sticks are called a number of things. You might be familiar with them to be called bastones, there's kanyas, there's yantoks, there's olisi, there's arot. There's a lot of terms for it. Commonly called eskrima sticks because that ranks better. Eskrima is the name of the, the martial art itself. Eskrima, arnis, kali. Uh, it's a Filipino martial art. Eskrima is almost universally and if they're not calling them Eskrima sticks, they're calling them Kali sticks. Yeah. That's, what, that's what people refer to them as. I've heard Arnest sticks. I've seen people write Arnest sticks. I've never actually, I've heard people say Kali sticks and Eskrima sticks. I've heard it whispered in the wind. So Kali or Arnest or Eskrima, that martial art came out of the sort of like uh, commoners. But that's all martial arts. Yeah, well, I mean, the most popular ones are the ones made by poor people. They don't have those fancy weapons. And sometimes we're restricted by law from possessing weapons. So it's like, okay, well, I can't have a sword or a gun. I've got a stick. Yeah, and so Eskrima sticks or bastones, they're one of the most popular Arnis weapons, uh, partly because they're useful in training for other Eskrima weapons. And what was, so what was the common implement that an Eskrima stick was if it's not an Eskrima stick? I, I think it was just a stick. I, I mean, I guess like a cane, like a walking stick or something like that. I think you're you're thinking sort of like with karate, where the nunchucks were threshing, or the yeah, yeah, the the size for a sickle kind of. I I don't think there was that sort of like this okay. is hidden. It was like, hey, we've got some reeds growing in the back. We have some sticks available. Yeah, let's let's do this. So if you're completely new to Eskrima, Arnis, Cali, to Filipino martial arts, uh, and you bruise easily, then you probably want to start with something that's that's pretty safe, like like a foam stick. I happen to have one right here. Kind of a standard size for these, about an inch around, 26 inches long. Mm -hmm. That's across the board. They're all very close to that. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, inch and a quarter, because it's got that extra thick bone padding. So I did that? Yeah, and I you're felt still, it. And you're still conscious. I'm still conscious. I've got all of my faculties. And you didn't get those summer teeth. Summer teeth? Summer here and summer gone. So this one's got like a plastic interior, right? And then it's got a foam padding. Right. It's pretty stiff for a foam stick. And it's got a hollow plastic interior, foam jacketing, little dragon design, and it's really light. That's the same dragon design that we've got on some of our foam nunchucks. Yeah. So this is pretty safe. These are, these are 26 inches long. A lot of these are- 26 inches long, a little bit fat. Yeah. I would feel totally comfortable giving this even to a small child. Yeah, yeah, even with tiny, tiny hands. Yeah, like tiny baby. tiny hands and a good arm, this is uh, this is fine. Or like baby hands. You ever like go up behind somebody and then you just like touch the like, oh, look at the baby hand. I've actually never done that. I'm not surprised that you have. So the next level up is the, uh, the use of rattan. And rattan is by far the most common material. In martial arts in general, a uh, ton of stick style weapons are made out of rattan. That's true, yeah. In Eskrima, uh, in the Philippine Isle, they also have other materials uh, in addition to rattan that they like to use. Like there's, uh, there's kamagong, which is a very, very hard kind of wood. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, there's something called bahi, um, but both of those are like endangered and so very expensive by very Canadian. very expensive in the Philippines I guess these kind of like grow on the side of the highway and here's the thing too with rattan it's not even wood that's what's so amazing about it it's not even wood it's a grass it looks like bamboo because it's segmented like if you look at this one it's got kind of segmented to it but it's not bamboo the segments are not hollow bamboo so, is hollow and rattan is not okay but it grows at a similar rate it's a it's a very fast growing uh, grass basically the internal structure of this has these like tiny pores rattan is extremely flexible it's disinclined to splintering and it's super strong right so it's flexible it's strong and it doesn't it doesn't want to splinter like wood when these things get beat up they will they'll crush and they'll start to peel a little bit but they won't splinter and crack the way that wood does 
Like so, if you were to just if you were to bend this to its breaking point, it would it would crack, 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 and it would just keep cracking all the way until you had it bent over, and you you have a tough time actually separating it into two pieces. two different uh, rattan escrima here. Mm -hmm. One is unpeeled. This one. And then the other one is skinless. So they're both defined by what they are not. What they do is the the segments here, there's kind of a knot there when it's, when it's wild. Mm -hmm. They shave that down and then just kind of sand the whole thing, but not enough to remove the skin. Finish it with a little lacquer, it's done. And so then the, the ones without the skin are all completely smooth and it feels the, more standardized. It does feel more standardized. It, it, it removes kind of the variation on the outside here. And then what happens is when they peel the skin off is it exposes some of the grain of that internal sponge that I was talking so, about. Okay, so so what, are the, what are the mutual benefits between peeled and unpeeled? The unpeeled one, it looks a little bit rougher it arguably is a little bit stronger because it still has that natural outer jacket of like rattan bark on it. Okay. Uh, so that, that, that may help it be a little bit stronger depending on who you ask. The peeled one, a little more standardized, a little smoother. So it feels probably a little bit better in your hand. Arguably a little more inclined to that crushing type of uh, damage that they they invariably will suffer if you get rough with them. And so a lot of people like to use Escrima for their training, mm -hmm. but I've read that like to sort of counter that that splintering effect that they put like tape on the ends or things like that. Yeah, people will you'll see these things covered in duct tape all the time. Oh, duct tape. all the time. Duct tape, bicycle grip tape, electrical tape. I mean, martial artists will use any kind of tape. Packing tape, bandages. I like that cloth gorilla tape personally. That black. Uh, cloth gorilla tape. I think that stuff is awesome. Oh, okay. What about so, other materials like wood? So this is the most traditional and probably the most common material you're going to see. It's light, it's strong, it's relatively cheap, but you have options. We are not Bronze Age peasants with merely the sticks growing on the side of the road. We have options. Okay. Take those away. We've got uh, wood. We can use regular wood. I like this one, dragon wood. So this blue dragon Escrima stick, this is actually very light. This is like half a pound. Yeah. The blue dragons, uh, this is just a, a light wood pine, I would I would suspect. Very right. light. Okay, yeah, and it's got a little dragon edge to it. Not as traditional, but it looks nice, which is, I think, why people like to buy these sorts of things. We have a black wood that's similar to... Now, that looks similar, but that one is oak. So you've seen the rattan, and you've seen the wood, so you might want one that won't break on you. Which so one would you like to show us? This is the polypropylene. The polypropylene is indestructible. Yeah, it's, we have two polypropylene ones. One has this sort of design like it's made out of rattan. It's got like the segments, but it's like 32 inches. Like you could cut it with a saw or something, but this one's actually, this one's still 26 inches. This one's a, a little bit heavier. It's because the rattan ones, those are like five ounces each. This one is like twice as much as that blue one. It's like a pound. Yeah, this is a little simulated wood grain to it. So it feels like plastic that has been textured to look like wood. So it's plastic textured to look like wood, which is shaped to look like rattan, which has been cut and shaped into a weapon. These are good, I like them because they're tough and they're heavy. Yeah, yeah. And this is the Western translation of the Escrima is into the baton. Well, remember, the, the, the word, the Filipino, Tagalog, Spanish word is baston. Baston. Which means baton. baton. There's this globalization, cultural admixture, cultural appropriation going on with these weapons. And you can see the, the power that comes from the, the shape of the we mm -hmm. these weapons. The, with the Rotina Screamers, I, I picture traditional... Asian style martial arts and baton I picture more mall security guard uh, prison guard so when you hear a scream a stick you want to exoticize the martial arts weapon when you hear baton I hear run it's the popo that's what I hear but what if you're like 
this is bland. Not yeah, it's not shiny. It's bland. Right. You need something a little flashier. Right. Since we have the whole factory in the back, oh, yeah, with all the machines and stuff, yeah. we've made a couple things. Solid aluminum hexagon screema. Mm -hmm. So this guy, solid aluminum, it's a 6061 alloy. It's got a multi-layered grip to kind of cut down on that vibration. And it's a little thinner. It's a little thinner than a, a Rutana Screema. Three quarters of an inch, heavy. That's 21 ounces right there. Yeah, yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. So if you're gonna build up speed with something like this, it looks good, it's nice and heavy. You're gonna build up the right muscles. When you switch to something else, super duper fast. But you've got something else. I've got something else. Show, I've got show, something else. Show everybody. The Black Drift Aluminum Screema. Oh, this is new. This is new. And it's awesome. Uh, what we've done is machine this so that the grip here is exactly the same diameter as the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So it feels great. It looks great. It's hollow, so it's a little bit... It's a little lighter than this one. It's definitely lighter. 14 Four, ounces. 14 ounces. So less than the polypropylene. Got this awesome grip on it. Mm -hmm. Good looking. It's hollow. Still got that thick wall on it though, so it's super it's tough. It's similar to our black grip nunchucks that we've got. It's, yeah, it's very we've, similar. We've the transferred same. the logic and the lessons learned from designing that to a screamo. In the same family. So what should a person buy? Well, hopefully we've organized this video in a way where you can see there's a progression. You start with the foam, you move to the rattan, then maybe the wood, then the, the polypropylene, and then when you really want to train hard, you get the metal ones. That's, that's right. You, you, when you train, make the noises with May, your mouth. Please make the noises when you're training. With, the, with your mouth. Flat. It's like it's like Adam West Batman. I guess that's that's our video. Are we done here? Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Hit the bell if you're watching on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, follow us and like us and share and watch every video and share it with your mother. She could use her Mother's Day money to buy me some screamers. I'm surprised you have a mother. You just seem like the kind of person who springs forth fully formed. I did. I exited a public restroom at a bus stop, and that's how I was born. I fell off of a turnip truck.